Spacecraft development is a risky and sometimes explosive business. You can even say that the industry is booming. SpaceX's Starship prototype spacecraft is an example of that. It is certain that the SpaceX crew had to overcome numerous problems and challenges in order to reach the current state of orbital flight. Recently, a photograph depicted the installation of the RVAC engine. Starship is a hard problem, Elon Musk said. This isn't the first time he said something like this. He previously stated that the difficulty of reusing Starship is an insanely hard problem. So there had to be a lot of other issues that Starship had to deal with, which is why Elon Musk had to talk about it so much. So in today's episode, the great SpaceX team decided to find out and analyze in detail the challenges that the SpaceX team had to overcome in the process of building and developing Starship. But wait a second, if you're new to our channel, a sincere welcome from the great SpaceX team. Make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the bell so you won't miss any of SpaceX's latest news on our channel. Now if you're all set, then let's dive right in on today's episode. So, what is the first problem that is most easily seen in Starship's development? We should probably take a step back to better understand what SpaceX is trying to do with Starship. This vehicle is the second stage of a launch system that includes a large booster named Super Heavy with its Falcon 9 program. SpaceX has demonstrated the ability to launch and land a rocket vertically, but the real trick comes with Starship, specifically bringing it back safely from orbital velocity and through the atmosphere so that it can be launched with minimal refurbishment a short time later. At 120 meters tall, the stacked Starship and Super Heavy rocket is the world's tallest rocket, and Starship is designed to do complex flips and maneuvers upon landing. And that's understandable when it is no stranger to explosions, ruptures, and failed landings. Many of these failures happened simply because Starship is a new system trying to do unusual things. SpaceX started testing the first prototype, Starhopper, in mid-2019. Until May 2021, they had the first successful landing with Starship SN15. SpaceX has come a long way since then moving through over 10 various Starship test vehicles and tank designs to reach orbital flight. Along with that, it's costing a lot of Elon Musk's money. Aside from that, what would be the next challenge? I want to talk about the development of the Raptor, and I'll tell you a story. In late 2019, in technical meetings with the Raptor engine team, Musk was pushing back on a decision his team wanted to make that would fractionally reduce the specific impulse of the engine. He wasn't happy. As Musk well knows, when you build a rocket, if you're adding mass or losing performance, you're losing the battle against gravity. That is why we fight for mass, and we fight for every fraction of a second of ISP, he told his team at one point, especially with a reusable upper stage which nobody has ever succeeded in. Just FYI. It's not like they were huge idiots who wanted to throw their rocket away all the time. One of the hardest engineering problems known to man is making a reusable orbital rocket. It's stupidly difficult to have a fully reusable orbital system. It would be one of the biggest breakthroughs in the history of humanity. As he delivered this little speech to his engineers, Musk's mood began to mellow out. Soon he was joking with the team. His point had been made. Yes, he understood what he was asking of them. It was gosh darn hard. It would hurt their brains. It hurt him. But they had no choice but to push through the engineering challenges. At that time, SpaceX refined startup and shutdown sequences and the general operation of what quickly became the world's most thoroughly tested full-flow staged combustion engine. SpaceX graduated to full-scale testing. Now, it's designed to produce about twice the thrust, around 200 tons, of its subscale predecessors. Approximately 15 months after Raptor's first flight, Starship prototype SN8 successfully lifted off with three engines, one of which performed a near-flawless four-minute burn to Apogee. Eventually, six months after SN8's successful ascent but failed landing, Starship SN15 successfully landed, demonstrating Raptor's ability to reignite mid-flight. Relative to almost any other large-scale engine development program in the last half-century, 
Raptor's 29-month 100-engine milestone is an extraordinary achievement. The closest comparable engine is Blue Origin's BE-4, which is expected to produce up to around 240 tons of thrust, uses an efficient, albeit slightly less so, combustion cycle, and relies on the same methane and oxygen propellant. Full-scale BE-4 testing began 16 months before Raptor in October of 2017, and Blue Origin has reportedly only built and tested 9 prototypes in the almost 4 years since. According to Musk, as of May of 2021, SpaceX is now building more than a dozen Raptors, including prototypes and flight engines, every month. Now, let's go back to the challenges of building Starship. I want to remind everyone how difficult it is to build a fully reusable rocket. Much of the Starship's program's time since late 2019 has been focused on building a factory in South Texas to churn out Starship prototypes. After only two years of construction and development, surely everyone can see the current change in Starbase. Prominent at launch site is the giant launch tower 140 meters high. This will be a support device that Elon Musk believes will support the landing of Starship, and Super Heavy. This is considered an alternative to landing pins, while increasing reusability and minimizing turnaround time between launches, because Musk wants Starship to be able to turn around after only one hour. However, one can understand how hard it is to construct this launch tower, especially given the weather and climate conditions in Starbase where powerful gusts from the sea constantly blow, impeding work. It's all over now though. Importantly, the process of a catching launch tower requires a great deal of precision, requiring SpaceX to establish the most advanced navigation and control system available today. And SpaceX still does have so much more to learn about Starship. This upper stage rocket need not simply fire its engines for 8 minutes and then fall into the ocean like the SLS core stage. It has to be capable of making multiple relights of its engines, surviving for weeks or even months in space, and re-entering through Earth's atmosphere with minimal effects to ensure rapid reusability. And then it has to stick to a landing. This is not some minor feat for something several times larger than a school bus that travels at 25 times the speed of sound, mind you. So, SpaceX has a long way to go. In the words of SpaceX engineer John Innsbrucker, we've just got to work on that landing a little bit. Yeah, that and a million other things before satellites, let alone people, fly into space on Starship. It's stupidly difficult work. But, does anyone doubt SpaceX will get there? Let me know what you think in the comments down below. And that's all the information we have for you today. If you like what my team and I are doing and would like to, you know, maybe give us a cookie or something, you can become a patron through our Patreon link in the description below. Don't forget to share your ideas in the comments so we know where to improve upon. Everyone's support will be the motivation for us to create more quality content. Otherwise, thumbs up if you enjoyed today's episode, subscribe if you haven't already, and be sure to hit the bell so you never miss out on future episodes of Great SpaceX. As always, this is Kevin, and I'll be seeing you next time.